half the time that night we were sitting there is this still your first listening to our conductor talk, 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 talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kelly yeah. sees this. She jumps yeah. down on there, goes up there, hands it to Pastor. It said, you guys look like a bunch of Lutherans up there. All was he left. Then he sent it to me. I knew Kelly for like 20 years. I saw that coming out of left field. That's Kelly for you.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. choice of Lamentations or a psalm today, we took Lamentations, and uh, we will read responsibly by whole verse. Uh, the congregation's responses are in the bold type. Lamentations 3, verses 21 through 33. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth. To sit alone in silence when the Lord has closed it. To put 
one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope. To give one's cheek to the slander, and to be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion, and the Lord will give him a witness of his steadfast love. For he does not really enjoy or grief anyone. A reading from the second letter to the Church of Corinth. As you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice it is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to, one, according to what one has not, according to what, sorry, according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. 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 Our music for the reading of the gospel will be the Celtic Alleluia. We'll sing it twice. I'll read the gospel lesson, and then we'll sing it one more time. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus 
and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing on you, how can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it, but the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was of 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know of this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. appreciation of each other, of our wonderful Kathy, this wonderful circle that loves and supports each other. You can give yourselves a hand. <laughs> the gift of the Episcopal Church and all that it has represented uh, in, in its generosity of spirit and welcome. The fact that we can believe in God and science at the same time. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I uh, was quoted on a, an ad uh, recently, and it was filmed in Grace Cathedral, and that was my line. We're all in on climate.
climate change because we can believe in God and science in the Episcopal Church at the same time. And I said, you should use as B-roll the um, stained glass window in the clear story of Grace Cathedral of Einstein. Did you know he was there? Yeah. It's the only one, uh, only stained glass window of Einstein, as far as we know, in the world. <laughs> and it has the equation on it, the uh, equation, wow. E equals MC squared. And as I say, um, that is the second greatest equation in the world. Uh -huh. The first is God is love. So there's, there's our faith and there's science together. So appreciation, gratitude for all of that. In the season uh, that is after Pentecost, we, the church liturgically uh, and, and in terms of its understanding walks an interesting journey. We walk with one gospel each year in that season instead of um, the readings that are centered around the coming of Christ in Advent, uh, the, instead of the Christmas readings that we have of the birth of the Messiah, instead of the Lenten uh, lessons that are penitential in nature, instead of the lessons at Easter of the resurrection of our Christ, in the season after Pentecost, we walk the whole gospel story as it's understood by one of the gospels. And this year, of course, it is the gospel of Mark. It's the oldest of our gospels written. It's the shortest of our gospels written. It was looked down on by the greatest of the romantic uh, uh, philosophers, Nietzsche, uh, who, who looked at um, it and, um, and uh, the Gospel of John as because the Greek is not so good as being um, uh, unworthy of uh, the elevated thought of the Greek philosophers and all that came afterwards. So this is the Gospel of Mark. Each of the Gospels, as uh, Riss Williams, uh, a really interesting theologian and Bible scholar said, has its own voice. They're all telling the same story, the story of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But, and they're not in conflict with each other, but they have a different facet. They're helping us understand, as they understood, as they received Christ, those communities around those Gospels, each received Christ in their own way, just as you do just as our church has. We have received Christ in the way that we understand Christ. And so we present Christ. We receive, we understand, we present. And this is what the Gospel of Mark is doing, just as Luke does, just as Matthew does, just as John does, just as the lost Gospels, like Thomas and the others do. So what is Mark about? What's going on in the Gospel of Mark? And what about this lesson today? So very early in the Gospel of Mark, well, everything happens immediately in the Gospel of Mark. The word immediately happens again and again and again. And there's just so much energy in the Gospel of Mark. Uh, Jesus is about something. He is about something. And he is not doing it slowly. He is filled with the Spirit. So he's baptized in the Spirit. The Spirit leads him. It actually pushes him in this Gospel into the wilderness where he's wrestling with all the darker forces of his life, of the world. And then the Spirit leads him into the Galilee, this area where he was raised, but uh, this marginal area. And he especially goes there after he hears that his relative, as some Gospels say it, his friend, as other Gospels say it, his teacher, as other Gospels say it, John the Baptist has been betrayed. Mm. And he has been put in prison. And Jesus moves into the Galilee at that point. And here it is. He begins his characteristic behavior in this gospel. He begins, it says, to preach the nearness of the kingdom of God. And to heal, to cast out unclean spirits, and to teach. Okay. Now, as you have heard from our presiding bishop, and in this diocese for the last 13 years, the kingdom of God is the same phrase that Josiah Royce, born in Grass Valley, California, <laughs> teaching at Harvard, called the beloved community. The kingdom of God is the beloved community. 
you can just translate it. Anytime you have kingdom of God, thy kingdom come, thy beloved community come. On earth as, oh, it's interesting, right? That, that is a revelatory kind of thing to do. Translate it all into beloved community. It's legit. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> That's right. Because uh, Jesus was not about replacing one king with another king. Jesus is about replacing the whole system with God's love. And so the beloved community is a whole different thing than one king to another king. One God to another God. One kind of power to another kind of power. Yes, there, the power of love. It's an entirely different so this is what this gospel is about. Jesus is going about proclaiming the nearness of the kingdom of God that is the beloved community. There's another interesting thing about the gospel of Mark. Well, numbers. But there's this way of telling the story of Jesus that is characteristic of the gospel of Mark more than any of the others by a long shot. And that is something that is called in uh, common terms the Markin Sandwich. Mark and Sandwich. And the gospel we have today is the prime example of the Mark and Sandwich, even though there are nine of them. Nine of them in the, this brief gospel of, of Mark. The Mark and Sandwich. So I know that there must be some uh, pandemic bakers in this group. <laughs> Anyone? Whoa. Yeah, I, um, I know there are bakers. So, yeah, okay. I'm one of those pandemic sourdough <laughs> bakers uh, so lampooned by the larger society and um, fine fine um, but let's talk about bread and let's talk about sandwiches for just a moment so bread is, is wonderful and there's some great bread in the Bay Area uh, you know Acme with uh, the whole relationship with Alice Waters and her beautiful slow food, local food movement, and Chez Panisse, well, we need some great bread to go with Chez Panisse. Let's make a bakery. Let's call it Acme. Um, beautiful bread. Uh, you probably have your local bakers, and you may make it in, at home. And there's certain breads that are so delicious, and they're so special. But what happens when you make them into a sandwich? Something different. So the bread is one thing, but what goes between the slices of bread makes it different. Let's talk about tomato sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> They're fantastic, oh, yes. right? Yeah. But you need a, um, a summer tomato, uh -huh. not one of these so-called heirloom tomatoes in the middle of the winter that don't taste any different than the other tomatoes. They're not worth having. But when summer is at its moment and the tomatoes are at their moment, and you slice those, and you've got two slices of Douglas's bread, <laughs> which are perfection, and you put the tomatoes between it and some mayonnaise on that, on the, that bread, and some salt and pepper, yep. and maybe a touch of vinegar, a little balsamic. Just a thought. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can eschew like that if you wish, but there's something beautiful. But it, it, it throws light on the bread. So bread, the tomato's a slice. The bread's a slice. That's the same. Mm -hmm. The bread's delicious. The tomato's delicious. That's the same. But what's the difference? The tomato makes us think differently about the bread. The bread makes us think differently about the tomato. Together, they make one thing, but they teach us something altogether that's different than the bread alone or the tomato alone, right? Are you with me? And it sounds delicious. All right, the Markin sandwich, we've got Jesus. He's been teaching on one side of the Sea of Galilee. He's returned to the other side, and the word about him has spread. In the, in the King James Version of the Gospel of Mark, it says it has blazed. The word of Jesus has blazed through all the countryside around him. And people know that he's proclaiming the nearness of the kingdom of God, the beloved community. He's healing people from their suffering. And he's casting out unclean spirits, which means the spirit of empire. I just put that in front of you. Unclean spirits were unclean in terms of Judaism. 
And in this gospel, in this gospel, an unclean spirit, there is one that Jesus encounters soon in this story that is not just one unclean spirit, but many. And when he asks its name, what is what is what do they say? Legion. My name is Legion. Now, that is not an accident. Yes. In fact, it has come into English usage, as so much did from the Bible, from the King James Bible, it has shaped our language. So legion just means many. But no, read back. Legion means legion. It's a unit of the Roman occupying army. That's the first clue as to what kind of uncleanness this is, infecting this man's heart and mind. So the next clue is they say, we know who you are. They say this to Jesus. We know you have come to destroy us. Don't do that. Cast us into something else. And he does. Where does he cast them? Into a herd of pigs. And they throw themselves over the brow of a cliff and perish. Now what about pigs? (laughs) <laughs> what about pigs? Dirty pigs? They're unclean. Right. They're unclean for Jews. Mm-hmm. Not for Romans. Not for the occupying empire. So Jesus is casting out colonialism of the soul. We've been learning a lot about that in this past year, haven't we? <laughs> We've been learning about structural racism, white dominance that has worked into the system and has been here for our, since our beginning, since 1619. Think of that. And this is what Jesus is casting out. So you can imagine this is really good news. This is really good news. So the crowd comes and they gather around Jesus. They're so eager, they're pressing in on him in every way. And he's presented with a, a desperate plea by a ruler of the synagogue. That's not an accident either. This is a person who exemplifies the holiness codes of the Jewish people, which Jesus believes in. This is not him repudiating this. This is him purifying and taking this to where it is meant to be, the gospel of love. And this man says, my little child, is my daughter, is at the point of death. Come with me so that you can lay hands on her and heal her. And Jesus says, yes. Jesus says yes. And they start to go. That's the first slice of bread. (laughs) That's the first slice of bread because then suddenly there's another story. And Sam Cooke sings this story in a beautiful, beautiful song that just actually uses the words of the gospel and tells most of it, most of it, word for word, as it's translated in in the Revised Standard Version or in the King James Version. Not very different than the New Revised Standard Version. So what happens? is that there's a woman, and she's had a flow of blood. So, by the way, this makes her unclean. Another sign of uncleanness. Women, sadly enough, are slightly unclean in that version of Judaism of its time. Okay, And women who are menstruating or having a flow of blood are more unclean. So she's an unclean person, and she has been suffering. And she has spent everything she has, all the money she has, on medical cures of the time that have, in the end, made it not better, but worse. And she's desperate. And she thinks, if I just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I will be healed. That's faith. And she does it. But notice... This is an unclean woman, and she knows she's unclean, and she's touching the hem of his garment, so she's making him unclean, but she's hoping he doesn't know it, (laughs) but Jesus knows things, and he feels the power has gone out from him, and he turns around, and this is uh, another piece of the, you know, bread is sliced, tomato sliced, a similarity between the two stories. His disciples laugh at him when he says, who touched me? Because they go like, Jesus. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? (laughs) Everybody's pressing in on you because they want to be near you. They're all touching you. What do you mean somebody touched you? But he had felt the power go out of him. 
And so he continues to look around. He ignores their statement about that. And the woman knows, she knows from the moment she touched the hem of his garment that she was made well. It says that the, the fountainhead of blood dried up within her. That's how it really reads. And she knows that he's talking about her. So when it says that she comes forward and falls in front of him and she tells him the whole truth, it says, it means that she's admitting that she has made him unclean. So that's the subtext in here. And what does he say? Well, how dare you do that? <laughs> no, he says, my daughter, your faith has made you well. Go. Go with my blessing. And be well and be free of your suffering. He ignores the fact that she had made him ritually unpure. Okay. That's the tomato. <laughs> and now Jesus continues. But they send a story to him, a, a report from Jairus' house. And here we, we're on the second slice of bread. And this is, this is a tough piece. Because while a woman in menstruating or with a flow of blood is unclean, a corpse is much more unclean. And they say to him, your daughter has died. Why bother the teacher any further? And he ignores this. It says, literally, he ignores them. And he says, let's go on. She is not dead. She is sleeping. And a second time, a group derides him. They get to the house. There's a great commotion in the house. There's weeping and there's ululation. It, it literally is that word where you go, woo, 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 woo. Sheila can do that actually really well. Um, <laughs> I cannot. Uh, but there's all that going on. There's a commotion, there's crying, and there's ululation going on. And he says, what's that all about? There is no need for this. She is just sleeping. and the, the, she, He's derided again. And then it says in the, our translation that um, he just basically ask them to leave. No, he throws them out. Jesus throws out all these people because we don't need unfaithful in this moment. He takes the father and the mother and he takes three of his disciples and they go in where the little girl is and he takes her by the hand. He touches a corpse. It's not the only time he does this. He's willing to go across these boundaries of uncleanness for the sake of love. And he brings her back to life. Now that's the other slice of bread. Mm -hmm. So what does the sandwich tell us? <laughs> what, what light is cast on those two slices, right? The story of Jairus, his daughter, and his raising the daughter from the dead. That's, that's the main story. But Mark has inserted this middle story about the woman and the flow of blood and her healing by touching his garment and his not remonstrating her but rather approving of her as the middle slice, the, the tomato, the mayonnaise, the salt, the pepper, and maybe a little bit of balsamic uh, in order for us to understand something about this other story. What is it? And it is what he says to the woman. My daughter. Say it, Douglas. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Okay, so this story, this gospel, is not all about Jesus. It's about you. It's about me. It's about us and Jesus. He came that we might move into the beloved community and behave as if we believe it. That's what this gospel is about and this Markin sandwich. 
when we hear that the beloved community has come near, our hearts leap. And we want to live like that. We want to live like he does. Not just that he does those things and we believe them, but we believe that we can do those things. That you can do those things. This is what the Gospel of John says when Jesus is nearing his death. He says, oh, don't be sad about the fact that I am going to be no longer seen in this world. Because if I do not die, the Holy Spirit won't come. And if the Holy Spirit comes, not only will the Holy Spirit help you and reveal all truth to you, but also, and this is amazing, you will do greater things than I have done. You will do greater things than Jesus has done. What an astounding idea. In my helplessness, and my passivity, and my willingness for others to do for me, I am denying the truth of the beloved community, which is for us to live in love, faith, and hope. I, for a long, long time, believed that the parable of the mustard seed, as it was, under, as it was uh, taught to me, meant this. If I had just a little faith, like a mustard seed, it would be enough. I think I misunderstood that parable. That mustard seed has big faith. That mustard seed has big faith because it believes that even though it's tiny, it's going to be the biggest shrub in the garden. Now, we may shake our head and go, yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, a little mustard seed. And then we see it grow. And then we see it happen. And that's the kind of faith that we're supposed to have in the beloved community. We're supposed to live like that. Live like that mustard seed. Live like the barriers of racism can come down. Live like the existential crisis of climate change can be turned back. Amen. Live like we can love each other across all the differences and boundaries between us. Because the beloved community has come near and is trembling at the gate, waiting for you and for me to enter into it and to live in the daring and bold way of faith, hope, and love that Jesus lived, where he didn't mind that an unclean woman touched him, that he didn't mind that a little girl who had died needed to be raised back to life, could he have done that without touching her? Yes, he could have. Actually, he's done it. He did with Lazarus. Did he touch the body of Lazarus? No. What did he do? He said, Lazarus, come out. Go. Come out. <laughs> right? Which, very funnily, was used as the cover of the Pride Mass at Grace Cathedral. <laughs> Isn't that great? I love that. Lazarus, come out. <laughs> I like that too. But he didn't touch the body of Lazarus. And that man had been in a tomb for four days and was decomposing. Mm. This little girl had just died. He did not need to touch her. He did it to show the power of love. And this is what you and I are called to live in. And it is the one thing that endures forever. As I began, it is the greatest equation in the universe. God is love. Amen. 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 Stand as you're able, and let us join together in the confession of faith known as the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God the God, 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 for us and for our salvation, he can
church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Mercy. Hear our prayer. I ask your prayers for the people who are impacted by the disaster in Surfside, Florida. May we continue to pray for people because of their diverseness that faced adversity. For the people in this country that suffer for orientation color, accent, language, for groups like the Kurds, the Rohingya, and the Uyghurs, for those whom we know who have suffered because they have been deemed different. Lord, in your mercy, hear your prayer. God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken aloud and silently in our hearts, and grant that what we have prayed today may be brought to bear in your beloved kingdom. All this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Please greet each other as you can. In the name of our resurrected and living God.
Okay. We're going to sing Joy to the World. Okay. Ruby and I are going to pick out a Lenten hymn. We're going to pick out um, uh, a resurrection hymn. Pentecost. And we are going to Definitely. put together, I, I asked if we're going to do Trinity, and of course you knew what I wanted to do, St. <laughs> Patrick's Breastplate. But <laughs> that would, Thanks, she's saying mix. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> so we're, we're actually going to go through the major festivals uh, as, as the beginning of the worship service for all of the things that we have not been able to sing together for now, now 16 months. Uh, so, so we will come together and that will be the beginning part of the service. Um, it will be a full on Eucharistic service. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, we, will, we will be homecoming. Um, in the best sense of the word, um, we've been through a lot. Uh, starting on the 11th, the Sunday after that, uh, I'll be convening a, a short class for about three weeks where we talk about what COVID was and is and what it still is. But we will also talk about God in those terms and faith in those terms and, and the impact that it's had on each of us. We're going to have a chance to uh, do a little debriefing about how the last 16 months have impacted our personal lives and, and the lives of those that, whom we love and, as the prayer said, those who are knit together closest to us. Uh, and, and so we'll spend two or three weeks kind of processing all of that. I've got another class coming up for the fall, but this seemed to be helpful for me to start working on this so I could start working through my stuff about it first uh, and, and then kind of moderate that a little bit. Um, Just out of curiosity, is a part of the discussion as we go through this, or maybe later on, going to be what has COVID taught us that we no longer need to be doing? Good. Well, and you know, that can be part of this, absolutely, and I think that's a brilliant thought. I mean, we've changed the way church is. No kidding. Uh, and we've changed the way work is. Yep. And we've changed the way relationships work mm -hmm. and what long distance means or doesn't mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a perfect example of that is, is, is our satellite community. Okay. You know, we've got, we've got Derek that's up in, in Canada. We've got two families in Sacramento that are from this parish. Yep. And we have your folks, the Reverend and Mrs. Evenhouse, yep. who are faithful members of this congregation as well. Uh, they watch the worship service almost every week. They're not here on today because... Derek's on. Derek's on? Derek's on right here. Love you, dude. <laughs> Blessings on your heart and may it continue to recover. Um, people on this one, too. Yep. And, and with, with the discussion of, of, of Jimmy Evenhouse, um, he's retiring the second time for ministry. He tried retiring and then he went back and did a bunch of stuff, so now he's really, really retiring. So he tells us. And, and so, Jim, we wish you the best. Congratulations on a life well lived um, and a ministry well done. Uh, we send all of our blessings to you if you get a chance to watch this. And I'm sure you all will tell him I said something. And uh, we love you and we have, love having you part of our coffee hour on such a regular basis. You're, uh, you're an inspiration and a gift to me, so thank you. <laughs> For all those years, what sixty something, sixty something years? Sixty years, years of uh, ordination. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. Here's to you, my friend. Yeah. Um, we've uh, we've signed the 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 contract for um, replacing the windows in the library. Uh, it takes about three months to get them here, and then they will put them in, and so that will be a nicer space as we continue to work on it. Uh, the painting is coming up too. Uh, and it, and uh, we also decided that we needed the doors where the chairs go painted in here. <laughs> but like I told you in my note to you this week, get those wallets ready. We're going to have to do something with the roof before the winter season returns because we're leaking on the organ and in the kitchen. So just warning you, we've got some work to do together. Uh, I think that's sufficient for me at this point. Uh, Dan, you want to play in, and do you have anything you, you need to say during announcement time? Except it's delighted um, all you folks that are joining us virtually, and thank you for making that possible. Um, this has been truly one of the gifts of uh, the pandemic is that we learn 
that we are indeed what we always have, have, always have said, a bigger community that are bound not by blood um, or by tribal affiliations or anything else, but by, by love, no matter where we are. So hello to all of you. It's really great to be with you. And I also want to say I asked Sheila to bring me my hat, but uh, she's so much more than a hat bearer. Uh, <laughs> yes. One of the Welcome. really great uh, people of the church, in my view. And so we're, we're glad you're here with us. And I'm so happy that Carol's here, too. That's really Yay. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And while I got one more second, we owe Rudy Evenhouse more gratitude than we could ever pay him for what he has done to keep us as a community. Yeah. Rudy, thank you. Woo! You're my hero. You are my hero. God bless you, bro. I can't tell you how much money you have to work with. Too. You're welcome. It isn't everybody that can get the, the priest to agree that your congregants instead of cardboard cutouts, will be all of those little animals. <laughs> all those little stuffed animals in the pews with their prayer books open and their hymnals open. I love it. <laughs> so did we. You're, you're that? You're that? That's a sign. That's a sign. I'll take all signs. I'll take all signs. Oh. Would you like to? Yeah. Just the justice thing? Uh, yeah. Uh, so as usual, I'm, I'm going to put in a plug for um, all the things that are going on in terms of social justice in and around Pacifica. Uh, anybody who wants information, as you know, uh, give me a call at 650-425-7088. But we've got a lot of um, different organizations, the Pacifica Peace People, Pacifica Social Justice, all those. And I would put in a plug since uh, the bishop's been talking about building the beloved community. I think a part of that is really doing, doing that outreach to other groups and making sure that we're working in tandem with groups that can be consistent with what we want to be getting done. So thank you, thank you very much, and also thanks to the the um, bishop's wife Sheila for for being here. That was uh, that's really that's really wonderful. Thanks. For communion, you will receive bread from the bishop. Uh, we're not to the stage of sharing wine yet. Uh, I've taken dug bread. And made the little wafers for you, so you're not eating those other wafers. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> well, you know there was always the Girl Scout cookie, right? <laughs> so, um, so you will receive from the bishop, and um, I, I would suggest that the, probably the easiest way to do it is to go out and around and come over there by by Catherine and come in. And, and just make your way from there, you know, instead of coming just all at once. We'll do things with a little bit of a plum. <laughs> Decently in an order. I don't know. That's Pauline. Yeah, so <laughs> what we do at your cathedral for receiving the bread, uh, just a thought, would be um, come and re take the bread and keep your mask on and go back to your seat and then unmask and, and okay. consume the bread there. That's probably what you're already doing. Cool. Well, mostly they've been at home when we pre-concentrated right, right. everything. So, so. so that's, we found that's the safest and easiest way at the uh, Grace Okay. Oh. Are, they, are you doing first? Well, weren't these the anniversary? Absolutely. Woo! <laughs> 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 what was that? An anniversary. Oh, cool. Oh, oh, oh. All right. There's there's two things to note. Um, first of all, uh, a couple of weeks ago I turned 70. Woo! I hardly know what to do with this O year. I've been thinking about it for a, about a year. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then last week we celebrated 32 years together. Okay. So we thought we'd ask the bishop to bless us. Oh, right. And then we're going to sing because Ruby's said she got. God grant us many years available. Anybody Is there anybody else that we need to? Uh... Any other birthdays or anniversaries? My brother and his beloved number three, Elizabeth, celebrate 12 years today, and I was honored to be at their 
Quaker meeting house in Manhattan 12 years ago. All so right. Wonderful. That's lovely. Yeah, wonderful. Wonderful. That's great. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Loving God, you have called together two beautiful children of yours and bound them together in love. Bless them as they continue their earthly journey together. May it be full of joy, without pain, and with unhampered ability to serve with radiance the circle of their lives. We know them to be a blessing to us. We know them to be a blessing to each other. We ask you to bless them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right, a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. O God, our God, creator of heaven and earth, for by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people, in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy. reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is alive. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ is alive. Will come again. Yes. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new an unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven our Lord, be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, will be done, be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. The blood of the Son and all the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. These are the gifts of God, given for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith. You'll be a self-organizing <laughs> organism <laughs> and just find your way forward. The body of our Savior.
Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth to the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render unto no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faith of the weak. Support the weak. Comfort the afflicted. Be patient with everyone. But make no peace with oppression. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God. The source of all being, the incarnate word, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Hallelujah. <laughs> the bishop has graciously said that he would answer a few questions and stuff after. We've got some bottled water for everybody. Um, so uh, if you wish to get up and move around a little bit and then come back together and... Uh, we can talk about sandwiches. <laughs> or other I also things. want you to tell them about that coop. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can do that. Yes. Maybe uh, cool. we should start while it's on. Yeah, okay. yeah. there you go. Good there idea. You go. So, so the diocesan, some of you have seen it before. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the diocesan sewing group, which is part of the diocesan albedo. Have a seat. Oh. Or, and wander off and get water or whatever if you'd like. Um, made this uh, in the first two years when I was bishop here, they met with me and said, what's your vision of the Diocese of California? And I said, well, all the beauty, beauty of the life of native creatures that are here, but also we have, you know, a patron saint, St. Francis, and uh, I think that's a little unbalanced, it's just always the guys, so, uh, so St. Clair. And um, they went away and worked for two years on this. I, I actually forgot they were working on it. And they made this beautiful, beautiful cope. So it has, um, these are all native, native creatures of California. <coughs> Our bear, which is no more. And uh, this beautiful, you know, here's the monarch. But there's a swallowtail over here. And there's California. a... Quail all over. Yeah, quail all over, and um, a stellar jay, California jay, and deer, and and then you've got Francis and Claire on the back, and other beautiful animals. But then they also did the water creatures oh. Oh. on the inside. So I've got there's this so there's a uh, wonderful sea otter, whale. Lovely. And then then they actually said, you know, Bishop. This one is not native. <laughs> <laughs> but we like it, right? Well, one of the women got a card from one of her best friends she'd grown up with from New Zealand. Oh. And it had the uh, seahorse on it. And she said, I just needed to put it on there. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, that, that's fair because we welcome everyone. Right. 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 They also did a little pocket for a prayer card on the inside with a little St. Francis and the Wolf of Gubbio. Uh, can't, oh, here it is. That they stitched. Francis and the Wolf, which is really great. I love that story. Yes. I've, I've been to Gubbio, and they still have her skull inside the church of Gubbio. Huh. She became friends with the people in the town after Francis befriended her. Um, this stole was made for me by a person who was behind me at seminary and they actually picked all these colors because of this but they didn't tell me so I didn't wear this stole with this coat for years and one time I was and some of the, one of the diocesan sewing group were there and they said finally <laughs> I said finally what and they said finally you're wearing the stole that was meant to go with the coat and I said well but how was I to know that? <laughs> anyway, oh, they didn't tell me. Yeah, they didn't tell me. Uh, so it has whales on it, and um, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's the same wonderful colors yep. as on the inside. And, yeah. So there it is. It's a, quite, a, quite a work of art. It was inspired by a woman named Anna Crossley. So maybe you, did you know Anna? No, I did not. But you know who she was? So Anna was an English woman, and she moved to California, a rarity. She had an undergraduate degree in theology from Oxford, a rarity in those days. So this is, her degree was probably in the 40s. She moved to California, and she started a sacred textile arts studio. She was a member of uh, the Church of the Advent of Christ the King on Bell Street in San Francisco, and she made incredible vestments, and, and that is the right word. They're all over the United States. Um, they're treasures. Many are in San Francisco and some of our congregations. So Advent has quite a lot. The cathedral has quite a lot. Um, St. Bede's has a full sets for all the liturgical seasons, amazing. 
and you, and you you see them pop up in various places. When I visit, I go, wait a minute, <laughs> is that an Anna Crossley? And uh, they're uh, they're so these women here in the art diocese of today were inspired by her work, and in creating this, it, this is very much in her in her style. So. Okay, th that's that. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So do you want a little break, and then we'll yeah. reconvene? Sure. There we go. Traveling music. <laughs> <laughs>